Hey, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Sonic's channel. Today, we're going to be building the real great Gabby Has Saga 2. And, you know, yes, I know it's very light, but if you've been watching my channel, you know I built a lot of Sakus, and sometimes when I build too much, same series kind of gamma, and I feel extremely exhausted just to see the design, okay? So today, I rest well, and now uh, we can come back to it. And uh, Gabi has a Saku. Uh, for some reason, though, I don't know why it is the box is, you know, the box is larger than the Johnny Ryden Saku because I think it was supposed to be based on that gamma, but I don't know why it become a bigger box. So uh, I guess I'll just find it out. So we're just gonna open the box up first. We're just gonna open the runners first. So it took me a very long time to, you know, open all the runners because. Let's be honest, there's a lot of runners here, but uh, most of them is just dupl uh, duplicated and, and you know, duplicated in a different color. But doesn't matter. So we just gotta look at the instruction manual first. So uh, we open up the instruction manual. We can see that a lot of runners, um, they have the recolors. So part will not be used, removed before assembling. So we can see that this ROG Zaku 2 actually left over a lot of parts. As you can see, we have a lot of crosses and then we have a lot of parts that don't even need to use, that, that don't even use, okay? Like such a, for example, the i2 runner, look at this. The i2 runner basically only uses, what? Three parts? That's pretty much it. And uh, so we're just gonna flick through the instruction menu because honestly, this instruction menu is, you can, you saw it like 10 times. Anyway, so we're just gonna flip it to the back. So now we look at it. So looks like this time we have more decals on the actual Gampla, which is pretty exciting. So we're just gonna go to the runners analyzation now. So uh, as you can see, that's just a lot of runners. So I'm gonna take a long time. So first we have the duplicate I2 runners, but honestly the I2 runners, you don't really need to use anything. So I'll just briefly say it. So feed parts, right? Basically all the parts here are not in use. Only this kind of knee part here and the uh, hand and the hands armor down here that be that will be used. So we can skip that part. So we have a K1 runner which is have a which have a contain the legs part and actually all of them are leg parts. And then we have a K2 runner, a K2 runner that contains feet parts. I I, I think so. It is a feet. It is the feet part, but there's duplicated feet parts. So that's weird. A D part, so we have the in the shield, and then we have the joints for the uh, spike and the shield, so right here. And then we have uh, the back waist, I believe. And then we have the, the Saku head right here. And then we also had the units that you put in the spring. And that's the E part. So the E part mostly is the inner joint. So as you can see, we have the, uh, I believe it's the part of the bazooka and part of the machine gun. And then we have the torso right here. And then we have uh, legs part here. We have some kind of other parts that I can't identify. And um, I think this is the feet though. And we have some handles for the weapons as well. And now, you know, furthermore, we have the F1. We have two F1 runners. They are different colored. So. I'm just gonna pick a pick pick the one that is easier to explain. So I'm just gonna pick this color. So um, first we have the spiking the spiking thing on the shoulders, and then we have the shield, the head, the antenna, um, the saku mouth, and we have this part. I believe it is for the hands. And then we have F two runner, which is the saku pipe. So you've seen this runner a lot. I'm not gonna do any explaining. So L runner, we have the Zaku backpack, the Zaku uh, torso, and then we have some fins on the backpack, and then we have some, I don't really know what's this two for. And then we have the backpack right here again, backpack, backpack. So mostly L runner is a backpack. So A part, and surprisingly the A part, they actually gave, they actually gave you two. That's pretty interesting. So I'm just gonna take one of the one of the runner and then just you know briefly explain it about it. So the A runner right here, we have the torso right here, side skirt as uh, back back skirt, and then we have a front skirt, and then we have Gabi has its figure. Yes. Yeah, I believe this is the one. Yes, the Gabi has it figured. 
and uh, we have the front skirt, we have the front of the torso, oh, uh, not the torso, I mean the waist, and then we have the front of the waist here again, and then I don't know what part is this, so, yep. So we have and J Runner, we have two colors again, so um they came from the same mold but they sep but they are kinda not from the same mold. It says zero six R here. Zero six R here, so uh I think I'll just pick this one. I think I'll just pick a black color to explain this time. So first we have the uh the legs unit for the thruster unit and then we have the uh, part of the legs here and then we have the feet and then we have uh, the sh in the shield and then we have the spike again and then uh this is the arms i don't really know um and you know that's pretty much it so i don't know why they duplicate so many runners i i honestly don't know so the i1 runner we have two again so i'm just gonna take take one as an explanation so the i1 runner we have a feet we have the uh, arms here arms here arms here and then we have the uh this is the shoulders this is the feet uh it's basically the i2 runner but just a couple extra pieces right here so lastly this three is the I think these three runners are the are the only runners that's not duplicated. So the edge runner, it is a uh, I would just call it as a weapon runner. So we have the heat hawk, we have the bazooka, we have the bazooka back, uh, bazooka scope, the the drum magazine, and then we have this is the probably part of the machine guns, and uh, we have a end runner. The end runner we have the the larger bazooka back uh, we have bazookas bazooka handle uh, we have bazooka scope and etc and i believe one of them is a weapon holder i do not remember which one was it so this is the lastly this is the m runner the m runner we have a lot of hands option as we can see right here we have uh, part of the backpack here and then we have the line for i believe this is for the torso the torso pipes and then um, we have uh, a lot of legs unit right here. Thrusters, thrusters all in here. And then we have, I don't know what's this part for. So I, I don't remember what's this part for. And this is another one for the legs, but honestly, so you think we're done, we're not. Actually, we have the B runner. So this is the MS joint. And this is the spring for you to put the um, legs pipe together. And then we have lastly the decal so the decal as you can see uh this time it is a little bit more than the previous sakus but honestly man how many runners is in this kit and honestly how many parts did they waste i would like to see that so uh we're gonna build this uh we're gonna build this saku up and then uh we'll i will tell you how many pieces they wasted on the runner at the review <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back to the review of the Gabi Hazard Saku 2. So this is the finishing product. Um, if you're asking me, is it worth it to buy it or not? I would say, um, I'd rather you buy the Saku Mine layer because you can at least see some difference on the actual gamma. For me, this is just feel like it's a overpricing Saku 2 that gives you the exact same accessory, the exact same um kind of detail exact same set of hands and basically the only difference on it i think is the decals and the color because i you know i try to take my uh johnny ryden saka 2 and then do a little comparison i don't really see comparison other than colors but um you know and before i go on the review i would just tell i would just you know make a little comment before i move on is Every Saku 2 RG got the same problem. So if you saw what I kind of dissing, like dissing the Johnny Ryan Saku 2 or the Saku Mine layer, the problems will exactly happen on this Saku because, you know, Bandai is so lazy. They don't give you a new frames. But, uh, I would say that unless you're like a Saku design huge fan, then I don't think you need to buy this P Bandai because honestly, uh, the only thing, if you really, if you really try to say something that is different, because the color, you can repaint it. If you try to say something that is different, I can on, honestly only tell you that the pilot figure and the decals are different. Other than that, the, everything is exactly the same, like the Jolly Ride and Saka 2. So, okay, anyways. Uh, I'm gonna start complaining and let's do a review. Before I move on, I need to tell everyone that how many runners did they waste on this kit so first you can look at that the a runner there's a lot of things left like they barely used like anything like they barely used it like you, you just have to take a look at this there's so many parts left and then you know the j runner for the brown color is fine because i only have the spikes left and then for the for the you know this one is the f1 runner the f1 runner is actually pretty insane because they basically left out every single part except for the i think these two parts was the i, I don't exactly remember what part is this but oh i think it's the hands i think it's the hands part and then we have the i1 runner which not really much left but there's uh about four pieces of armor left the j runner black one is horrible as well because they left out most of the parts as well and then we have the i2 runner the i2 runner they left out a lot of things as well as you can see and the i1 runner they left out a lot of things as well it's not really a lot but it's just exactly the same like above and then we have the d runner some part left out as well and then this is the connector for the pipes and they left it out as well and then we have oops it's about it's about to drop and this is the i2 runner the i2 runner we left the shoulders this is this is just a lot of waste that you consider it and this is the f1 runner uh f1 runner is pretty fine they only left out a uh the horn and the e runner the e runner they left out like the bottom part of the runners and honestly though if you just count count it it was about wasting about one two three four five six seven eight nine ten it's, it's, uh, it's around ten they wasted around ten runners and the wasting number is just insane like the price of the kit is not actually on the gobbler it's the amount of plastic that's been wasted and it's just it, it's just not very good okay so now we're just gonna start with the head the head is just exactly the same like the other saku that i've been reviewed uh it's a commander custom so it just turned into black and uh it does contain the same design as the other sakus where when you move the head the mono eye inside the clear piece will move along as well the head can move up and move down as well and honestly though i can say that the rg saku the one thing that will keep me uh kind of you know keep making good comments about the gunpla is actually the head because the head design i seriously very like it and um and i think it's kind of kind of make the anime's version 
into real life right now we're gonna take a look on the chest so the chest uh honestly there's not much to talk about and the problem that on the you know the problem around the connection between the waist and the chest is exactly the same like the previous saku i don't really think i need to go very detailed about it because you've been watching the saku my layer and the johnny ryden saku 2 review and you must know that the the waist and the um torso connection is very weak and you can often get a shaky shaky part like this uh but the movement on it is pretty fine i mean it's a big wall joint so you can move it move the saku to a pretty wide angle so uh that's something to consider um also um you know there's not much there's not much to say about this torso because that's basically exactly the same like the previous one but you know if you're buying the RG Zaku, you do know that there's a function for you to open up the cockpit. And when you when you take a closer look to the cockpit, there's not much to look at because honestly, there's just a seat in it. There's no pilot, nothing, uh, uh, no, no extra detail or anything like that. So there's not much to look at when you actually turn, open the cockpit. And other than that, there's not much really to talk about about the waist. And for the arms though, the arms contain the same movement like the previous RG Sakus that you know, you know, able to turn around, um, do, you know, uh, bending, do some bendings and then, you know, um, spinning on the top as well. That's completely fine. And then, you know, at the bottom of the hand here, there's no movement as well. And, you know, the spike, and the shield can also separate from the actual shoulder as well so that's not much difference to the two sakus that were previous previously reviewed so uh let's just not go too detail about it because honestly i've been saying the same thing for free videos you should probably you should probably catch up then yes and uh that's and but there's a thing still contained in this saku kit is the standing is the sanding is incredibly hard for the hands option uh we do have the same exact same set for uh both uh both saku that reviewed before so we have this uh very old rg a uh, full movable hand and then we have an open hand we also have the you, you can call it the trigger hand or the weapon holding hand and we have the fist hand currently uh, mounted on the gampla and that's pretty much it for the arms and the torso now let's talk about the waist and the legs part so the waist and legs part is that's basically exactly the same so the front waist you know still contain the same problem because it's a ball joint so it's extremely easy to pop out as you can see i just slightly move it and it just popped out and i have honestly nothing to do about it because uh honestly though um if it's if i'm if i you know based on a you know builder that actually loves the saku design i think the rg saku is a complete joke as you know more more professional rg frames being released and i kind of feel like this kind of early stages rg are absolutely jokes and i just i just feel so sad about it and you know the side skirt as well it can move and then the back skirt of course it can move as well the legs moving uh the moves the legs uh, articulation remains exactly the same uh the front kick yeah pretty good uh side kick pretty good as well back kick of course there's some and then you know the the part that rg saku always having a hard time is the bending angle on the actual like uh articulation and it's just 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 and here is another problem as well because the the joint on the on the actual legs is not actually that stable and you can see that there's part constantly falling off or you can see parts where the legs you know keep uh the legs didn't quite stick to the uh, actual joint and you can see now there's parts even falling off from the actual kit and i honestly need to say though they really need to rework their early rg um uh gamplas and it's just so sad that saku saku is such a cool ms design and you know there's a lot of variation and a lot of ace pilot being piloted them and it's just very disappointing to see that uh it, it's it's just so bad compared to the more than more than like compared to the previous years of the you know the the new rg and it's just very disappointing and the legs here of course is movable and you know contain the early rg thing where the tip of the feet is movable and honestly there's another thing that i try to say is try to make a trying to make the rg saku stand on it is just stand on the actual table is pretty hard 
See, even the head popped off. Like that just that just bull. Oh, that's just bull crap, okay? Like they need, they really need to rework the early RGs. Like they have cool designs of the Saku, but they don't have a good frame for it, and it's just honestly very sad. So now we turn it to the back. We look at the backpack. The backpack, honestly, there's not much to talk about, but they we do have a little bit of articulation on the this kind of sign of uh, the wings here. The you know small. Uh, wings here and then you know the pipe is all the way connected to the backpack as usual and then honestly there's not much to talk about on this backpack because let's be honest the color is totally black except for this you know red piece of sticker right here and the thruster down here is movable as well so you know that's pretty much the backpack the backpack is not really much uh like a very shocking uh what's that called a shocking backpack like shocking designs and then you know as for the articulation we have a very simple uh rg kit on the in like rg saku kits type of accessory we have these uh 280 millimeters uh bazooka we have another bazooka that is 360 millimeter and this one provides a um, foldable scope and each Saku scope and handle is uh, actually movable so that's the difference between HG and RG and we have a very typical Saku machine gun where you can you know because it's an RG so you know you can pop this pop this piece off and then you know treat it use it and then you know display it as a spare drum to display but honestly I really I wouldn't really take this off because text it just doesn't really have anywhere else to go we have i i sort of paint the axe first because i feel like i should probably present it as it was heated so i painted the edge of the axe to orange and then we have a little containment part here where you can put the uh, axe on the side on the side skirt here and yeah that's pretty much the accessory but but uh there's something different between the this type of uh rg saku and the actual very very early version of uh, shars saku is that we have this extra equipment here if you've been watching my channel and i did say this on the johnny johnny Ryden saku 2 uh this one is for containing all type of weapons so basically you can kind of remember it to this so the larger part is for the uh, uh what's that called so the larger part is is for the bazooka so we have we just have to slightly move it and honestly though i i, I need to say that it, it's not really that even like the stability on this handle is not really even that good and it's just it's just honestly very sad okay just honestly it's just very sad and i can't even find a find a part to put this thing on yeah like some something like that but well anyways but here's the thing is i'll just i'll just skip that but here's the thing is that you can actually equip this on the saku shield and you know just making it whole like that but here is the thing as i mentioned it to you the saku waist is so sloppy and if i put the bazooka on if i put the bazooka on let's just be honest it can barely stand on its own as you can see the gunplay is leaning towards one way so i wouldn't really recommend you to put all type of weapons on the saku shoulder because honestly uh you know as time passes on i just afraid your saku is gonna snap into half so you know this thing though just take a picture just take a photograph and then you know post it on somewhere else just to show it off and then you just take this off because honestly this is too much pressure this uh equipment right here is a it's just too much pressure for a it's just too much pressure for a very sloppy waist this is the end of the video hope you guys enjoyed this video um I'm sorry about all the negative things about I'm saying about this gunpla, but honestly, this gunpla compared to today's technology is just a joke. Okay, like as I said, the amount of laziness that Van Damme put onto this, you know, beautiful uh, design, and it's just it's just wasted. It's just like the Shin Masnaga's uh, get a good Jenga. It's just exactly the same. They use the old mode, and then you know, just say, oh yeah, we changed color, and then just sell it as a new thing. And I honestly think it's just, it just, <laughs> it it's just a the level of laziness is just not acceptable. Like they wasted such a good design, and I really wanted to have fun with my RNG Zaku, but honestly, with this kind of frame, with this unstability frame, I I can't do it. I honestly can't do anything about it. And plus, I have to say though, 
Um, so I've been told that I, I've been watching the Gampa news and I was told that there's another new RG Saku, which is the Uma Light Sling version. Uh, is the blue and white version. I really want to buy it because the color scheme is so good, but you know, on what I'm, I have three RG Sakus in my uh, shelf right now, uh, including this one. And I honestly think the, the frame is just a joke and I'm seriously considering should I buy it or not because I, I really don't want to spend heavy amount of money on one RG and it get such a disappointment, such a, such a big disappointment. The, the, honestly, the frame is just so disappointing and I really wish I can enjoy the model, but I just can't because the, the frame can't even stay on its own. And as you can see, I'm trying to, I can't, I, I don't want to put it on the action base. And so I just put it on the uh, actual, just the uh, turntable. And then now, as you can see, when the Zaku is trying to hold the bus, it's just leaning towards one way. The frame is just so weak. It can't even hold weapons. It can't even hold its own weapons. It's just ridiculous, okay? Like they really, like I'm seriously calling this, they really need a rework and a revive version for this RG Saku and the RG RX78. They, they just need it, like honestly. Well, but anyways, uh, my recommendation is if you really don't have too much love towards the Saku series, don't buy it because it's honestly a rip off. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. I'd rather you buy MGs. And yeah, this is the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to drop a like on my videos and subscribe to my channel. And I'm sorry for such a negative video. And I will see you guys in another Gunpla review. Goodbye.